Hi friends! Today we're at the Edith Elmore Nature Sanctuary in Spring Branch. It's located along Rummel Creek and it's in the heart of a neighborhood. Most people would not even know it's here. It's on just a regular street with houses and everything. You don't even have to drive far to get here. It's 17.5 acres of land that houses some really awesome plants and animals right in our own backyards. You can hear the cars and trucks driving by as we are here. So what's behind these gates that we're about to go into is something magical, something you would not expect at all. So let's go find out what the Edith Moore Sanctuary has in store for us today as we work on requirement five of the Tigers Stories and Shapes Adventure. All right, friends, we are here at the Edith Moore Sanctuary and I have found Richard and he's gonna tell you a little bit about what he does out here and a little bit about the Nature Sanctuary. Hey, Scouts. My name is Richard Gibbons. I'm the Conservation Director for Houston Audubon. Our headquarters are here at the Edith Elmore Nature Sanctuary. Come and see us. This is almost 18 acres in the middle of West Houston. So uh, about 1.5 miles worth of trails. You're welcome to come help us with those trails too. Cool. Uh, and it is a lot of woods in the middle of town. So uh, if you need to learn your trees or if you need to see wildlife, there is all the wildlife, uh, almost all the wildlife you can find here. So armadillos, we've got really healthy understories, and lots of lots of possums, squirrels, raccoons, and birds galore. Awesome. Uh, so come on out and see us. Yeah. So and you've got kid programs out here too, right? So Some. Uh, yeah. Go on our website, HoustonAudubon.org, okay. okay. uh, and see what we have available. There's a family Wednesday mornings. There's a family explorer club. Um, there's some other like owl prowls and other programs as well but just go to our website we keep it up we update it as a calendar there very cool well, we're so glad you're here and you're so close to home and you're just it's interesting to hear the animals versus the car noises mm -hmm. that's an interesting it is an escape it is an escape it's magical yeah so, well thank you so much for talking to us you're and welcome come we see appreciate us it. Alright friends, I have found one of the learning pavilions here at Edith Moore. It is a small area where you can sit down, you can relax, you can read a book, you can have your award ceremonies here for your scouts, you can learn different things all the way around. Now I am a little closer to the street so you will hear some cars as they drive by, but it's interesting because we still hear all the nature sounds as well. The birds, the bugs, all kinds of noises if you listen closely. Um, you can't see the cars, which is kind of cool, but you can certainly hear them. Now today's requirement for tigers and stories and shapes, we are going to be working on requirement five. Requirement five says that you are to make a picture using tangrams. Well, what's a tangram? A tangram is an ancient Chinese puzzle that is made from a square that has been cut into seven different geometric pieces. Now the way the puzzles work is that every piece of this puzzle will be used to make a shape. One picture. They have to touch, but they can't overlap. So you'll see that a little bit more as we go along. So I've given you this resource in your list of information, so you would need to print this out for today's lesson. If you haven't, you can do that and come back in a little while and work on it as well. But what you do is you take this one, you can color it, you can paint it, you can add designs inside of it, you make them bright and cheerful, and then you're going to cut them out. You can also, if you want to make it a little bit more sturdy, you can take it, you can put glue on the back and put it on the back of a cereal box piece of cardboard before you cut it out. That way those pieces are a little more stable. And lastly, if you want to, here's a neat trick. You put glue all over the back and smooth it out. You gotta make it really smooth. So a glue stick is good for this one. And take a piece of scrapbooking paper and glue that to the back of this. When you cut it out, your pieces will be colored on one side. So this is kind of a neat way to do it as well. But really, if you don't have any of that, just use some crayons, markers, colored pencils, paints, whatever you have. You're gonna cut them out. There are things called 
Shape by Shape, which is a game you can also use that has tangrams, and you can see all the little pieces that are loose in here. So the game itself, when you open it up, has these little cards inside that have challenges for you. Look, maybe that's a deer, or a person, or a candle. Two cats looking at each other. But you have to use all your shapes to create your design. And that's the way tangrams work. So you can see here, I have the seven that have been separated to create just the box. But these are just taped on here. If I take it off and I move it someplace else, I take this one, I can start making different designs using all seven of the shapes. So that's your trick is to use all seven to create a design. But a little bit later after we go exploring through Edith Moore, we're gonna stop and we're gonna read a book called Grandfather Tang's Story. And it's the story of tangrams, or a story told with tangrams. I think you're gonna like it. So I'm gonna keep looking. We're gonna take a little bit of a hike and our next stop, we will look at the book and we'll uh, do some artwork with it. So I will see you in just a bit. Right, isn't this beautiful out here? I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little river that goes through this little area here. And I've already seen squirrels and little fish and just different little lizards, things like that all the way around me. They're everywhere. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna read you a story that's called Grandfather Tang's Story. You should already have cut out your tangrams picture that you printed online. If you wanted to color them in, you could color them in, you could glue them down, all of those things, but you should have those cut out and ready to go. I'm going to read you the story, and in the story it talks about different shapes and puzzles that the tangrams can create. I'm going to zoom in on each one of those pictures, and at the end of the story you can go back and you can pause the story, and you can work on putting the animals together using your seven tangram shapes. So let's get started. This is called Grandfather Tang's Story by Ann Tombert, illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. It's being read with permission from Penguin Random House Books. And it is beautiful images. Let's get just a little closer. Grandfather Tang and Little Sue were sitting under a peach tree in their backyard. They were amusing each other by making different shapes with their tangrams. Let's do a story about the fox fairies, said Little Sue. So Grandfather Tang arranged his seven tangram pieces into the shape of a fox. Then Grandfather Tang made another fox with Little Sue's seven tangram pieces. Little Sue clapped her hands as her grandfather began. So I'm gonna pause the book in just a moment and show you these images and that way you have a chance to put these together. Although Chow and Wu Ling were best friends, they were always trying to outdo each other. One day this rivalry almost brought their friendship to a tragic end. They were sitting under their favorite willow tree besides a river talking about their magic powers. I can change myself into a rabbit as quick as a wink, boasted Wu Ling. I'll bet you can't do that. I can too, said Chow. Cannot, said Wu Ling. Anyway, actions speak louder than words. And he changed himself into a rabbit. Not bad, Chow, said Chow, smoothing his whiskers. But watch me do better than that. And before Wu Ling could blink, Chow changed himself from a fox into a dog. Now when Chow changed himself into a dog, he not only looked like a dog, but he felt like a dog, and he acted like a dog. He bared his teeth and he lashed his tail. Wu Ling shivered and twitched his nose. I love rabbits, Chow growled, and I'm going to get you and I'm going to gobble you up. The dog edged closer and closer. Wu Ling's eyes grew bigger and bigger. He was too frightened to move at first, but then he thought, I'll be safe if I can climb up these willow trees. 
His little puff of a tail grew long and bushy, and his tall ears shrunk as Wu Ling transformed himself into a squirrel. Wu Ling sprang into the willow tree and scrambled to the top. Chow will probably turn himself into a cat so he can climb into the tree after me, Wu Ling said to himself. But he'll never catch me. I'll jump from tree to tree and he won't be able to follow me. Of course, Chow thought about changing himself into a cat. But that's just what Wu Ling expects me to do, he said to himself. What can I do to surprise him? He thought and thought. I know. I'll swoop down upon him from above. And he turned himself into a hawk. Chow circled round and round in the sky above the willow tree, searching for Wu Ling. Wu Ling peered through the leaves of the trees, looking for Chow on the ground. Round and round Chow circled the willow tree until he spied Wu Ling. Keek, 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 he shrieked as he zoomed down upon that squirrel. Wu Ling trembled. Chow's beak looked so sharp, sharp enough to pierce right through him. If only I lived in a shell house, he thought. Then Chow couldn't hurt me. Chow stuck out his fierce claws to seize Wu Ling. But Wu Ling dove towards the river below the willow tree. And as he drove, he tucked in his head and tail and his legs, turned green, and turned into a turtle. Wu Ling climbed up on a mossy rock in the middle of the river. He thought he was safe because he looked as if he were part of the rock. Chow circled round and round, searching and searching until his sharp eyes spotted the turtle. Then he swooped down, down, down towards him. But just as Chow reached him, Wu Ling plunged into the water. Follow me and, I'll dr and you'll drown, he cried. Don't worry, cried Chow, plunging right behind Wu Ling. His body grew longer, covered with scales. He whipped the water with his long, wicked tail and he snapped his spike tooth jaws as he turned into a crocodile. Wu Ling circled round and round as he plunged down, down, down to the bottom of the river. Chow lashed his wicked tail as he plunged after Wu Ling. Just as they reached the bottom, Chow clamped Wu Ling in his spike tooth mouth. Now I've got you, he bellowed through his clenched teeth. Oh, no, you haven't, cried Wu Ling, who grew smaller and smaller and changed himself from green to gold as he transformed himself into a goldfish. As he swam out of Chow's mouth between his spiked teeth, then he hid in a patch of cattails. Chow turned the water with his lashing tail as he charged into the patch after Wu Ling. With his head swinging back and forth and his eyes darting here and there, he searched for Wu Ling. Wu Ling knew that Chow would not give up until he found him. I must fly from here, he thought, as he started to honk as he transformed himself into a goose. Chow charged after him, but Wu Ling spread his wings and he took to the air. Chow watched him fly into a small island where a flock of geese were feeding. By now, he was not only very angry, he was also very hungry. He decided that if he could not catch Wu Ling, any goose would make him a good dinner. He splashed through the water towards the island until he reached it. Honk, 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 cried Wu Ling, and he took off into the air. A chorus of honks swelled the air as the flock of geese spread their wings to follow him. While Chow watched the honking grew fainter, the flock grew smaller, and he felt his anger slowly drain away. Why, oh why did we play that stupid game, he moaned. I'll never see Wu Ling again. He closed his eyes and he sank towards the river's bottom. Just as he touched it, however, he had an idea. And up he popped again, a goose himself. Moments later, Chow was flying after Wu Ling and the other geese. He could hardly see or hear them at first, but he did not let this discourage them. Calling upon every last bit of his strength, 
he forged ahead. Each flap of his wings brought him closer. The wedge of geese slowly grew bigger. The honking grew louder. At last, Chow found himself flying beside Wu Ling. I'm tired of our silly game, he cried. Come back with me to our willow tree. Before Wu Ling could answer, something stung Chow's right wing and he sank towards the ground. A hunter had shot him. Wu Ling flew down beside Chow, placed his left wing under Chow's smashed right wing, and together they fluttered down to the edge of the forest. The hunter ran towards them. Fly away, Chow urged Wu Ling. Save yourself, fly, fly. I won't desert you, cried Wu Ling. And with a mighty roar, he changed into a lion. The hunter raised his bow. Wu Ling sprang towards him and knocked the bow from his hand. The hunter fled, leaving his bow behind. Wu Ling and Chow returned to their fox shapes, and Wu Ling helped Chow to his den, where he took care of him until he was mended. Did they ever play that game again? asked little Sue. Many times, said the grandfather, but they were very, very careful. That was a good story, said little Sue. Let's do another. Grandfather arranged his seven tan grand pieces. Is this story gonna be about a man? asked little Sue. Yes, said her grandfather. He's old and he's tired, and he just wants to sit under a tree and rest a while. Is he a grandfather like you? asked little Sue. Yes, said her grandfather, just like me. So little Sue arranged the seven pieces of her tangram beside her grandfather's. Is that a little girl? he asked. Yes, said little Sue, just like me. She'll sit and rest beside the man. That'll make him very happy, said grandfather. And now little Sue, what will we do? We'll sit and rest together until mother calls us for supper, said little Sue. That will make me very happy, said her grandfather. See you The end. Now, what's beautiful about this book, and I really love this picture here, this book is done in a watercolor. So you can see the pictures aren't necessarily perfect, but they have a gorgeous look about them where all those colors blend and they are so beautiful. So I would love for you to go back and see the story again and you can pause it for every little tangram image and see if you can use your tangrams to put together the pictures of all the animals that were in this story. Now I don't know if you've been listening, but there's been some interesting sounds behind me as I read this book. I've heard some bugs. I hear a really noisy bird above me. But I also hear some cars and motorcycles because we're not that far from a major street. So, if you get a chance, you should come out to the Edith Moore Sanctuary and just come explore, come take a trek, come take a hike, and come see what there is. It's not that far from home. You just wanna to remember to bring your bug spray and your sunscreen and your water. The trails are amazing and they have done so much work here at the Edith Moore to make it beautiful. I hope you enjoyed our book. We're going to take a little bit more scenic journey through the Edith Moore Park before we go home today. But I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you in a bit. All right, Scouts, thank you for coming with me today to the Edith Moore Nature Sanctuary. I hope you had a good time exploring with me as we looked around and saw what the outdoors had to offer us. It's so nice to be out in this type of environment. It is a lot cooler in this area. It's a lot of shade. So if you do come out, uh, just remember to bring your sunscreen, bring your water, bring your mosquito spray because they do have mosquitoes out here with all the cool water features. Um, but I hope you always get out, get outside, enjoy the world around you, and keep making art. Bye-bye, guys.